Imagine a country without crime, where no one drives above a speed limit, no, one, no jaywalking, no robbery, strictly regulated guns, no possibility of another citizen hurting another. This is a world of pure justice, one where all crime is punishable without exception, where the punishments are there as a deterrent to crime. This is also how a country called North Korea works. The punishment where the punishment for speaking against the leader would result in you, your entire family, and the rest of your family for three generations to come to be imprisoned in labor camps. One where propaganda is the only news that the citizens are allowed to hear. And one where the, where the citizens are interrogated by the government 24-7. This is what a pure justice system would look like where every crime, no matter how small, is punished to at least make the criminal suffer equally as the victim, if not more. This begs the question, why does the effectiveness of justice change with the ideology behind them? Varying countries have different views on how they should handle their justice systems, such as Singapore, the US, and North Korea. And it is through these different viewpoints that we can get a closer view of to what, how a perfect justice system might look like. To start with, the former leader of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew, used harsh punishments as a deterrent for crime throughout the country. He put into place steep fines for, for, for things like jaywalking, and a crime that might earn you a few days in jail in any other country would earn you a lifetime sentence in jail or even the death penalty here. It's no wonder this, this country has boomed from one of the poorest and most underdeveloped countries into a sprawling metropolis and one of the most advanced countries of the modern age. This is the power of extreme and harsh justice in a country. It can, it can transform extremely poor countries into sprawling metropolises. However, this kind of harsh judgment would never come to play in a democracy. No. Singapore was led to its success through a dictator. And if you were to ask the people, they would agree. The rules and regulations, even with how strict they are, have made the country so much better, and they would prefer not to change them. A few years back, it was illegal to, to enter the country with long hair if you were a man. You could either get kicked out or be imprisoned, depending on if you grew it in or outside of the country. Since then, that law has since been removed. And, the law, and since Lee Kuan Yew's death, the laws have been relaxed, just slightly. But many of these laws are what gave Singapore its rise. By having these strict laws, crime would become, thing, would become a thing that no, no one would dare think do. They were so effective because the country was on the verge of being overtaken by crime. These flaws stopped any crime from happening and, and prevented the surge from ever taking place. Many believe that replacing these laws with slightly more relaxed ones sorry, would only undo the work of Lee Kuan Yew. Yet for some reason, even knowing that most of these rules were an unnecess unnecessary evil, for, the United States has refused to enact any laws even close to the ones put into place under Lee Kuan Yew. Now, the United States has a very different way of looking at their justice system. Many are divided on what to think about it. Some say it is too lax and others too strict. However, all agree on at least one thing. It is deeply flawed. The US holds over 22% of all incarcerated prisoners, while only, while only having 2.2% of the world's population. Additionally, 0.91% of all Americans are in prison, and 2.2% are on some kind of par parole or house arrest, according to the Washington Post. No other country in the world imprisons that many people. And most of the time, these are on charges that would only earn you a few days in another justice system, such as illegal possession of marijuana, a drug that is already completely legal in eight states and medically available in many others. Given all this data, it is hard to see why having harsher laws would benefit the US. This is because the U.S. is in a drastically different situation than Singapore was 50 years ago. The U.S. is pretty well off economically, and it has, the mo it has many natural resources and the most powerful army in the entire world, along with a culture that is centered mainly around consumerism and self-betterment. This is directly opposed to Asian countries, which whose cultures are mainly focused around family values. What my point here is, is that the way our justice system should be set up is completely arbitrary and should be set up and should be relative to the country and its resources. What works for one country may not work for another. In the last country that I wish to talk about, it has gone to the extreme of what Singapore did. 
and goes far beyond the idea of an eye for an eye and is more like your entire family for three generations to be sentenced to death for an eye. I am, of course, talking about North Korea. Now, there is not much known about how North Korea handles its citizens' crimes. However, we do know a few examples which paint a very clear picture of the rest of its justice system. As I stated before, if one person decides to stand up to the dictatorial rule of the government, then them, their whole family, and anyone born in that family for three generations are sentenced to work in labor camps. This is basically a death sentence. The living conditions in these places are equivalent to that of Nazi Germany in concentration camps. However, to be fair, this type of, of government has worked well in some areas for North Korea, others not so much. There have been practically no protests or rebellions. And the people, that have, people living there have claimed to be happy, according to the North Korean government. But in reality, the people are way too terrified for the government, of the government to enact any kind of rebellion. And any data on the Korean people is made up by the government to try and prove their superiority over, over South Korea. So yes, being a total dictator dictatorial government with the harshest punishments in the world for crimes will lead to a stable government, but with some obvious drawbacks, such as many of the citizens starving and many of the population dying to get out of it by any means possible. Now, if someone filled with evil were to receive the power of the country, uh, to command the whole country, what could we do? Fear the unjust punishments that, they, that he decides to lay upon our brethren? Or be forced to live as slaves to a tyrant? After all, this system seeks to keep us from committing crimes in the first place, because we do need to be bound by laws, or else we would be no different from animals. In this system, in which people are punished in harsh manners, does it not hold a judgment based on the human factor, based on one of the main things that makes us human, mercy? We are able to forgive and to learn from this, but this system, this idea of justice being almost lethal, does it not, does not, does not forgive and does not give second chances to anybody. However, according to the philosopher Hobbes, this way of thinking is flawed, because in many cases, giving up your own freedom, however bad it might sound, can be beneficial to, your, to you and your country, because most people cannot make logistical decisions under stress, which is why we might give power to one individual who we know would make the best decisions and can handle, the stress, and can handle that stress. According to a survey we provided, almost 20% of people would save their family over the rest of all of humanity, proving that people are unfit to make decisions with the greater good in mind and act selflessly. This is a philosophy that can be seen in Singapore, and it has paid off very well for them. In conclusion, there is no perfect justice system. It all depends on the countries and its specific circumstances. Some systems can provide some form of peace to an entire country, but with major drawbacks. And other types only work in the extremely specific circumstances, such as Singapore. And some systems are still working out the many kinks like the US. The only thing we can do is look back at the other systems and try to see what they did wrong and improve off of those mistakes. Thank you.